Item number, SCP-3305. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. Mobile Task Force Gamma-84, codename Holy Toasters, are to be permanently stationed at SCP-3305. All personnel attempting to gain access to SCP-3305 without prior approval are to be detained, administered Class A amnestics, and released. Should SCP-3305-1 manifest, it is to be detained by Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 and transferred to Site-19, where it will be stored in a standard humanoid containment chamber. Protocol Judas is to be executed in the event of a containment breach meeting the required criteria. Protocol Judas Protocol Judas was a method of containment proposed by Dr. Teller to successfully detain and terminate SCP-3305-1 while causing minimal physical and psychological damage to those under its effects. This is only to be considered in the event of a containment breach where SCP-3305-1 is summoned and has made contact with a civilian population. Phase 1 Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 will bring a D-Class person with an ailment, from now on referred to as the patient, to a building near SCP-3305-1. All smoke detectors inside the building will be disabled, and the patient must be kept in a room which is not visible to the outside. Airplanes equipped with the suitable amounts of gaseous Class B amnestic shall be positioned near the civilian population. Phase 2 Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 will request the assistance of SCP-3305-1 in healing the patient. It is imperative that no civilian personnel be allowed inside the building with SCP-3305-1. Given the nature of SCP-3305-1, if the request is made in earnest, it will comply. Phase 3 once the patient has been cured by SCP-3305-1 and cleared the premises, Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 shall incinerate SCP-3305-1. Phase 4. The airplane shall dispense the Class B amnestics over the civilian population. Phase 5. Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 is to perform a survey of the civilian population to identify individuals who retain memories of SCP-3305-1 and administer Class B amnestics as needed. Description. SCP-3305 is a collection of five trees in the forest with slices of bread stapled to them. All attempts to remove the bread from the trees have failed. If a particular ritual is performed at SCP-3305, see document SCP-3305-R, then a humanoid composed of bread will appear, SCP-3305-1. SCP-3305-1 will offer parts of itself to eat and puncture itself to produce wine to drink. This bread and wine have restorative properties, as individuals who have consumed them report being cured of all physical and mental illnesses. All individuals who consume part of SCP-3305-1 worship it, as well as bread in general. The form of this worship varies highly between individuals. While amnestics can successfully erase memories of interaction with SCP-3305-1, subjects under SCP-3305-1's effects still believe in the existence of SCP-3305-1, and will continue to worship bread. Only after SCP-3305-1 has been terminated do amnestics become effective at erasing all memories regarding SCP-3305-1. Additional Documents SCP-3305-R Materials needed 50 loaves of white bread 3.79 liters of red wine A virgin 18.14 kilograms of homemade dough 14.4 cubic centimeters of flour 3.79 liters of gasoline matches, and a Bible. Lay the loaves between the stapled pieces of bread to form a pentagram. This will require all 50 loaves, assuming each loaf is approximately a 30.48 centimeters long. Pour wine over all of the loaves of bread. Move the virgin into the center of the center of the pentagram. Cover the virgin with the dough, so none of the virgin's skin can be seen. Sprinkle the flour over the virgin, and all loaves of bread. Douse the virgin in 3.03 liters of gasoline, and each piece of bread in 0.19 liters. Ignite all five pieces of bread. Ignite the virgin. From the Bible, read aloud verse Mark 14, 22 to 24. After the dough rises, it takes the form of SCP-3305-1. It is unknown what happens to the virgin, as all testing indicates SCP-3305-1 is made entirely of bread and wine. Event SCP-3305-A The following is the Foundation's current understanding of what occurred during Event SCP-3305-A. All information was gathered from SCP-3305-1, 
local authorities before being amnestized, and foundation personnel present. Day 1. An unknown group performs the ritual described in document SCP-3305-R. SCP-3305-1 manifests and is led to an abandoned church near the small town. He is hidden for the rest of the day. Day 2. During the morning mass, wine and bread from SCP-3305-1 are served to attendees. 80% of was present and consumed part of SCP-3305-1. At the end of the sermon, SCP-3305-1 introduced itself. All civilians in attendance acknowledge SCP-3305-1 as the personification of a deity. A banquet was held using bread and wine from SCP-3305-1. Day 3. SCP-3305-1 visits the rest of Those who appear to be afraid of SCP-3305-1 are reprimanded against the anomaly's will. SCP-3305-1 feeds one civilian afflicted with Alzheimer's disease a portion of itself. The civilian claims a miracle has occurred, and can now remember his past clearly. Days 4-7 through seven. Those who refuse to consume part of SCP-3305-1 are discriminated against by approximately 40% of those under the effects of SCP-3305-1. These individuals are often refused service, and are called gluten-free. SCP-3305-1 is unaware of the abusive treatment. Each night, SCP-3305-1 offers pieces of himself for consumption. It is estimated that 90% of the town have consumed a portion of SCP-3305-1 by Day 7. Day 8. Joseph Westing, the inventor of the gluten-free slur, announces the creation of the Westing Church of Wonderbread. Its tenets are similar to those advocated by SCP-3305-1, However, they believe that white bread is a superior bread. 40% of joins the Westing Church of Wonder Bread. Day 9 through 11. Members of the Westing Church of Wonder Bread become increasingly hostile toward gluten-free civilians. On day 11, the Patrickson family is forced out of The accounts of the Patrickson family are the first reports the Foundation has received regarding SCP-3305. Mobile Task Force Gamma 84 is sent to investigate. Day 12. Members of the Westing Church of Wonderbread attack a bakery. Two civilians are stabbed to death with sharpened, stale baguettes, and four are beaten with the same weapons. SCP-3305-1 publicly denounces the Westing Church of Wonderbread. Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 arrives at <laughs> Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 detains SCP-3305-1 and requests transport for SCP-3305-1 to Site-19. Day 13. While attempting to administer amnestics to the residents of the Westing Church of Wonderbread riot. Four Foundation employees and 20 civilians are injured. After the altercation, Class B amnestics are successfully administered to the rest of the population. SCP-3305-1 is interviewed by Site-19 personnel. See SCP-3305 interview log for the full transcript. Day 14. Residents of return to worshipping bread, referencing SCP-3305-1. The individuals responsible for the Westing Church of Wonderbread create another organization called the King's Hawaiian Congregation. When asked about this, SCP-3305-1 replied, They can still feel my presence, so they still know. Although, what more is faith than a feeling? Dr. Teller requests the termination of SCP-3305-1. Day 15. Site Director Rogers approves Dr. Teller's termination request. SCP-3305-1 does not resist personnel during the process. SCP-3305-1 is terminated via incineration. Day 16. The Aviation Division of Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 administers a gaseous amnestic to the residents of <laughs> via an airdrop. The rest of Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 surveys the town and administers amnestics to those who did not encounter the gaseous amnestic. All memories of SCP-3305-1 are erased, and all evidence that SCP-3305 exists is confiscated. Mobile Task Force Gamma-84 is assigned to monitor SCP-3305. SCP-3305 Interview Log Begin Log Hello. I'm sure you've been told that you've been brought here for questioning. I have. There is nothing for me to hide. Well, it's good to know you don't feel uncomfortable. Can you tell me where you come from? I come from the Great Bakery. I have returned to once again enlighten men and women in the ways of the baker and to let them feast upon my body. Returned? When were you here last? I know not the passage of time between my last appearance and now. I can say for certain that massive bounds in culture and technology have taken place. I am quite impressed. Fair enough. 
What happened to you during your last appearance? I attempted to do the same as I did these past weeks. I brought bread and urged people to break it with one another. The only difference was that back then, bread and wine were scarce, so I was considered a blessing and a miracle. Do you not consider yourself those things? No, no. I'm just a humble butter knife, spreading the words of the baker. Do you feel pain when you tear off pieces of yourself? I do, but I have grown used to it. I have suffered for the masses in other terrible ways. Giving away my blood and flesh to feed the hungry is but a prick in comparison. Speaking of which, I believe I have not offered you any. SCP-3305-1 removes a small piece of bread from its arm and offers it to Dr. Teller. Thank you. But I ate earlier, so I'm not hungry. Very well. Are you aware of the actions of a group called the Westing Church of Wonder Bread? They were responsible for an attack on a bakery in town for selling, and I quote, whole grain, the heathen's bread. I have. Have you spoken to this group at all? Not directly, but I should have. I do not condone their message. Wonder Bread is terribly bland. I much prefer Pepperidge Farm. End log.